this video is designed to show you how to import an AutoCAD file into SketchUp and then learn how to model on top of that import. This is actually a project I have my students complete that helps them learn how to use SketchUp while building a portfolio worthy project. So here I am in SketchUp and I opened a new file with the architectural inches template and I'm going to switch over to AutoCAD where I have a plan already drawn up. Now I didn't use any colored layers, I just used layered zero, but I did add all the doors, windows, uh, casework, and plumbing. Uh, all you really need for it is to be just drawn in model space. So just make sure you have your AutoCAD file somewhere that you can remember saved, and we're gonna go back to SketchUp. So to import the AutoCAD file, go to File, and Import. And then what you need to do is you need to look for the actual AutoCAD file. So this is mine right here. I'll click it and hit import. This window will pop up showing you what imports and what doesn't. So in general, text does not import into SketchUp. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit close. Uh, I don't really need that information. And ooh la la, here's the floor plan, all nice and flat and aligned with the coordinate system. Uh, this came in perfectly. Now sometimes it happens that the version or year of SketchUp doesn't read the recent version of AutoCAD. So if that ever happens and you can't get the AutoCAD file to import, what you need to do is go back to AutoCAD, do a save as, and when you get this window, go down here to where it says files of type and then choose the 2004 version. So you can basically save different versions of AutoCAD. And for whatever reason, uh, that's the year that works best. I mean, yeah, I, 2004 was a good year. I graduated with my bachelor's degree. So again, just in case you have any problems, just do a save as, save it this way, and then make sure that you're importing the 2004 version of AutoCAD into SketchUp. Alright, back to SketchUp. So I always recommend clicking on the floor plan just to see what it does. In this instance, the entire floor plan is selecting all the lines together. That means it's already grouped, which is exactly what we want. If yours, for whatever reason, does not come in already group, and when you select something, it like selects a single line or something along those lines, that just means that you need to group it. So just select the entire floor plan with the selection box, right click, and choose Make Group. Now once your floor plan is grouped, like mine currently is, your next goal is to make sure that you can't accidentally move the floor plan. We need to lock it in place. So to do that, click on the floor plan to highlight it, and then right click and go to lock. You'll see the color of selection change from blue to red indicating it is indeed locked. Now that it is locked, we can draw right on top of this import. So our first goal is to draw in the floor, very similar to how they build a real house in life. One of the first things they do is uh, pour the floor slab. So we're going to draw it, take the line tool, and choose an area to start drawing and trace it all the way around until you come back to the beginning. So I'm going to start right here. And what you'll notice, and sometimes SketchUp can be a little tricky, but you just have to move it if it was kind of ghosting it out for whatever reason. I don't know why it does that. So we're going to click here, and what I'm looking for is that purple circle. That purple circle indicates that I am at a corner or intersection. So we're going to go right through the door. Don't worry about it. We're going to punch a hole in the wall, but our first goal is to just build the walls. So I'm using the orbit, and then I'm going to come back in and keep tracing. And we're going to go all the way around, so just be careful not to go all the way to the edge here. You want the floor plan, not like the group selection box. So make sure you're grabbing the right lines. Here, this little diagonal, and we are right back to where we started. So what happened is when we closed the shape, we got a face. And I can tell because when I click on it, you should be able to see little blue dots. And so those are faces, and the lines that we drew are called edges. 
Now that we have a face, our next step is to bring up the exterior walls. So I'm going to use the offset command, which is located right here. Because all of my exterior walls are the same thickness, it makes it super easy to just separate the walls from the floor. So with the offset command, hover over your edge and you should see that red grip box and it says on edge. Click to initiate the offset command and then move your cursor forward into the plan. And you don't need to move it a whole awful lot, but I mean, you can go wherever you want, just as long as you're inside. Don't go outside. Stay inside. And then type the thickness of those exterior walls, which in our case, it's 12 inches. So one, two, enter. And what you should see happen is that we have two different faces. So right now the walls are kind of highlighted, but I'm going to select the push pull tool so that um, I can go in between and see that there are indeed the interior floor and the exterior walls have been separated. Once they are separated, I'm just going to use the push pull tool, click and drag upwards and I can drop it and type nine apostrophe for nine feet, enter, and our walls have been brought up to nine feet in distance, which is the height of our vacation villa that we're building here. Now that the exterior walls are up, we're going to do the same thing to the interior walls. We're going to trace the template on the floor. Again, ignore the doors. Um, we're going to punch a hole in those. So just take the line tool and start in any spot. I'm going to start here in the kitchen. You just need to know what your walls are. So purple circles. That's what we're going for. And again, ignore the doors. Coming over here. Now this wall is a little different over here, and that's fine. Now I don't need to retrace where the exterior walls already are, so I'm just going to hit the black arrow and then the line tool again. Purple circle. Purple circles are what we're drawing in all the way to the end on this one. I think the hardest part about SketchUp is uh, the orbit and the maneuvering around as you're trying to draw in it. That is the hardest part, so I'm going to kind of do something like this. So both sides of the wall need to be drawn. And again, you don't have to trace where the wall already is because a line already technically exists there according to SketchUp. So now I'm on the inside of the bathroom, just tracing around the walls, getting purple circles. And there I have traced all of the interior walls. So I'm going to take my handy dandy push pull tool. And again, I just want to double check and make sure that the walls are being separated from the floor, which it sure looks like it has been. So once you have it correct, just grab it, pull it up, type nine feet. And there you have the walls. Beautiful. Now the one thing that we can do is when we look on top, you do see some line separation. So you can take the little eraser guy and you can just click once on it and it will disappear. Our goal is to um, make a marriage between the exterior walls and the interior walls because like I tell my students, there are always spiders living in our walls and we want them to be able to roam free throughout. And then here, you'll see that we have an extra line as well from the way that uh, the walls were created before. So I am just going to click on that with the eraser and it goes away. And there is all of the walls built up. And next on our list of things to do is to cut holes in the walls for the doors and the windows.